How many times have you seen a beautiful meat and cheese board on the internet and wondered how did they get it to look so effortlessly stunning? I'm Lauren McAnally, food stylist with Better Homes and Gardens. Today I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks about how to arrange that meat and cheese board and capture it at the perfect angle. So the very first thing you have to do when you're making your meat and cheese board is pick your palette. First off, we have a chalkboard, and the great thing about this is that you can write on it. If you're milling about in your party, you don't have to hover around the board and let everyone know what each cheese is, and they can just kind of explore on their own. And the next boards I'm gonna talk about is marble. The awesome thing about this one that I love is that it's actually on a Lazy Susan. If someone wants to reach for something else, they can easily spin it and grab what they want. So the last option is this large wooden board that I have here, which provides a huge surface area for all of your items, several cheeses, meats, fruit. We're gonna work with this board today. So I have a couple different varieties of height, something low and wide to really show off what you have, a smaller dish, and then a nice high one. And then we also have a metal dish to show a different texture, and then I've got long rectangulars, and then I've also got a glass dish as well. Looking at the variety I have here, I like it, but I wanna give myself a little more room to get all of those delicious cheese and meats on the board. I'm gonna take two of these away. So I've got a variety of mixed olives here. We've got Marcona almonds. And then I have some honey here that will go great with a bunch of the cheeses that we have. Some sort of sweetness to balance the salty. And then I have some whole grain mustard as well. So if I were styling this for photo, I'm looking at my olives and I would like to have a couple more pieces that have that brighter green or maybe some of the pepper flakes that are on it. So I'm gonna go ahead, pick out the various olives with the different coloring and put them where I want them. Today, I've got five varieties because we're building a large board. I have a mimolette, which is a hard cheese that's from France. So that will give you that kind of firm texture. It's really salty. And I also have a blue cheese here and I have a Gouda, which is a semi-soft cheese, so we're kind of getting a different range of textures there. And then I have a soft rind cheese, Brie, or if you don't like Brie, Camembert is another option. And then my last cheese I have for today is a fresh cheese, goat cheese. If you're not a fan of goat cheese, um, fresh mozzarella or burrata or other fresh cheese options that would work great for a board. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of a wild card. I've got cream cheese here. <laughs> and you might be saying, what? Who wants cream cheese on a cheese board? There's always that one guest that maybe doesn't like cheese or maybe is a little intimidated by it. So it can be kind of nice to throw out some cream cheese, and it's not gonna just be plain, don't worry. Another fantastic thing to add to your meat and cheese board is some sort of jam or compote, another dimension of sweetness to balance that salty cheese that you have going on. So I'm actually gonna top this cream cheese with a little bit of marmalade that I have here. This way, you can kind of add another flavor element. Nowadays, there are so many awesome meat and cheese boards out there that offer you a variety of utensils to choose from. This hard cheese right here, I'm gonna just kind of chip away at and get it started for my guests. You don't wanna necessarily put a bunch of blocks down because everyone's a little shy at first and they don't really wanna be the first one to dive in. And then it also gives your guests kind of an idea of how the cheese should be cut. So everyone's second favorite portion, maybe first, who knows. We have our meats. We have prosciutto here that normally comes in those nice long strips, but I've folded them up here just to give you some good texture and then just make it a little bit easier for everyone to grab one. The second option I have here is a hard salami. I've cut these into very thin, small slices because they have a dense texture and a little bit chewy. And then the third selection I have here is just a smoked summer sausage. So we've got that variance in texture going on here. So 
So then, once again, we're gonna get our utensils in place for our guests so that they can easily grab what they're looking for. Believe it or not, we're going to get more onto this board. The last step is to fill it in with some beautiful color with our fruits and vegetables. Right now we've got apples and pears and figs in seasons. The other thing that I've done is found a couple unusual options. One being maybe figs. Some people have never even had fresh figs and if they just happen to be in season, go ahead and pick some up and throw them on the board. The other thing I grabbed was star fruit. This is a fruit that maybe someone hasn't tried before or haven't even seen before. So it can be really fun to add those to your board and add that kind of wow element. So the final step in our beautiful meat and cheese board, the crackers, the carbs, or non-carbs. So now you've assembled this beautiful meat and cheese board and I'm gonna show you a couple tips and tricks to make sure that you get the right angle to capture it in its full glory. Now I've built this meat and cheese board keeping you guys in mind so I have kind of an angle on it where the cheese is very visible in the front and then I've built up some height this way which means I'm probably going to want to take my photo from this side. The other thing is we've kept the crackers off the board so we're going to maybe need to shift these around so that they're peeking in from the back or the front. When it comes to angles, you don't want to shoot it low because you have so many beautiful things going on. You really want to be able to capture all of it, which means going up to a three quarter or 45 degree angle. But if you really want to get the best angle, getting up above and making sure to hold your camera at a flat, even level is really the best way to capture all the wonderful things you have going on here. Hopefully after spending this time with me, you realize that putting together a meat and cheese board and capturing it with that perfect angle to share with your family and friends is not that difficult. I'll see you next time.